Hey, everybody, we're here for a new episode of Five for Talking. I'm here with Caps, the captain of the show. It's me, Campo. We're going to run into this. We just came out of the All-Star break, and I'd like to tell you first and foremost that Caps hates the All-Star game. I know. Leave a comment below telling him that he's a doo-doo. Because how, how could you hate the All-Star game? How do you hate the skills competition? Cringe. It's all cringe. Oh, my God. It's so good. It's so The, the skills competition in basketball and hockey and the home run derby in baseball is the best part of all-star weekend. Yeah. They all get together, all buddies now. And, you know, then they go back to hating each other again. <laughs> hey, but you know, that's the way she goes. So, uh, quick news, uh, <coughs> Toronto has secured the 2024 all-star game, which caps will not be attending when I get the tickets. No. Um, you know, so I'll be live filming live from the All Star Game in 2024. Show up if you want to watch with me. Ah, uh, so just the Robin Leonard situation. I think that's what we need to talk about. Well, we're going to avoid all All Star talk because who cares? Since you don't, all right. Um, but Robin Leonard is a- allegedly in debt over fifty million dollars. <laughs> Yeah, I think I, uh, I think I, I kind of guessed, or like we, we were guessing numbers, and I think I, I think I, it was like ten million. We said no, he screwed. Yeah, that's crazy. We talked about that. That's uh, more money than most hockey players make in their entire career. Mm-hmm. So, I don't know how you're going to figure that out. And and after all this controversy and everything that he's done to blacklist himself, um. Who's going to want him? Huh? Who's going to want him? No, so I mean, I don't think you're getting any more money to pay any more of these bills because I don't think anyone's going to want you. And if they do, they're not going to pay you a lot. You're going to get like a, a 500K salary to play in Buffalo or something. You know what I mean? As a backup. Or an AHL team. Fact of the matter is, he made some bad financial investments and. You know, he had no choice but to file for bankruptcy. And, and you know, um, there really is, I don't think there really is no way out of this. Like, he's really put himself in a bad, bad situation. You know what I mean? Um, I mean, we don't, we're not privy to his uh, private affairs, but the fact of the matter is, um, a lot of the stuff that uh, he was involved in came out. And, and the fact of the matter is, he's 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 screwed. <laughs> I I'm not going to disagree with you at all on that. Uh, that I don't even have anything else to say. That's he he's in a bad spot, and he did it to himself. You know, you know like, what? It's like karma. It's like karma. And I don't want to say the things he was fighting for before were bad things, but when you look back at it now with the hindsight you have, knowing what's happened, it's like holy crap. He never cared about anyone. He was just trying to milk the system to get money. He he didn't want he didn't want to play. He just wanted to collect disability. Yeah, I mean, even before that, like when he was talking crap about some of the coaches and how they would be treating some of the players when he had no inside information on that kind of stuff. Like he's just stirring the pot for for I'm sorry, for no reason. I, I you know he's just getting involved in things that don't really involve him. Um, I mean, when we're talking about karma, you know? Yeah. But, um, I, yeah. It is what it is. Well, that is what it is. So let's talk about something else that was brought up. And he seems pretty passionate about this. I've heard it a few times from him. Sidney Crosby does not like the playoff format and he wants the one to eight style back. He's the, he's part of the majority. I mean, I never liked it. I really don't like it. It's, it's, you know, it's not worth it for a team to get into the second or third spot when you know full, full, uh, full well that you're going to be facing either the second or third team in the conference. Like it, it just doesn't make any sense whatsoever. You're, 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 you're battling for a home ice advantage for so what? Can I throw one out there? I think you're more, you it's it's pays you off more to finish in the seventh or eighth spot uh, like the last two wild card spots because 
you being the underdog team puts so much pressure on the number one spot team to make sure that they win, that you have a better chance of defeating them mentally than you do being facing the second team, facing the third place team. Yep. Cause Tampa Bay knows what they're getting in Toronto. Do you know what I mean? But Boston yep. facing uh, New York Islanders, you don't know what's going to happen there. And it's not like the Islanders suck, but the Islanders can easily just show up and, and mentally mess with you. If they play really physical hockey against you and win the game win the series especially when they added Bo over yeah I, I genuinely think well we'll segue to that next but I genuinely think that it's it's not a benefit to finish in first second or third your benefit is to finish in one of those two wild card spots yeah I I, I I don't see the advantage of it I don't see the benefit of it in terms of um you know exposure to the audience i don't see i don't see great interconference rivalries that's what they want they want to bring back the old days when everyone was fighting except that no one's allowed to fight and it doesn't make any sense it's like uh wayne simmons threw a haymaker the other night straight up knockout punch congratulations to him but uh i digress it's not part of the league (laughs) it's not part of the new nhl anymore uh i hate it but so let, let's talk about um, this trade. So the Canucks and the Islanders pulled off a trade. I'll list the trade for you. Bo, Bo Horvat was sent to the New York Islanders. He's a pretty solid two-way player, uh, having a really good season offensively. Fits in perfectly with their style of play. This is a Lou Lamorello trade all day. Yep. Uh, and in return, though, the Vancouver Canucks get Anthony Bolivier, or Beauvillier, Um he has a huge upside. He's a solid player, but he just, every time he does something good, he he falls back down. Um, they got Aturati, who's a decent prospect, and they got a first overall pick. So, I mean, I think both teams win in this trade. Vancouver gets younger. They get a chance with potential. They get a first-round pick. The Islanders get someone that fits into their lineup and helps them win now. What were your thoughts? You pretty much summed everything up. I mean, uh, I think it's a good trade for both teams. You know, Barzell needs some help. He's got some help now. Um, The team is better. Uh, They're going to have a really hard time in the Eastern Conference. However, um, adding a piece like Horvat, you know, it's it truly becomes unpredictable for the New York Islanders in terms of what they can do in the long run. Um, they may surprise, like you just said a couple of minutes ago, may surprise someone like Boston going into the playoffs. Um, so it, it, it's interesting. Um, there really is nothing else to say in terms of what you already said. I think it's a, it's a great trade for both teams. I think both teams are, are going to benefit from this deal. Yeah, that's fair enough. Um, just generally, so you had you had a, a topic you wanted to bring up. Well, we're talking about the All Star Game, and we're talking about the playoff format and all that stuff. Uh, recently, an article came out um, saying that viewership is down about twenty two percent from last season. I'm not sure if that's possibly because of the. Um, pandemic or whatever but um you know it's i'm not really surprised i mean you know it's there are they're trying the the playoff format is has really kind of ruined things for me um you know them really trying to make an effort to get fighting out of the game is is also ruining it for me um and I, i i it's no surprise to me that viewership is down um since last season um, yep. you know, potentially it might go up in the playoffs because uh, I know viewership was up in the playoffs last year. But the fact of the matter is, I mean, even the All Star Game. I'm sorry, some of that stuff was just cringe to me. I couldn't even watch. But the highlights is the only thing I was able to watch, and and it was hard for me to watch because a lot of the stuff was pretty pretty much cringe. Um, you know. Um, Would you say that it was cringe? I think it was cringe. I think it was cringe. Um, yeah. Um, I'm just not surprised. 
you know, I'm just not surprised. Uh, hopefully uh, things turn around. You know, I think inconsistencies with the refing play a part of it. You know, there's not enough consistency. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, so uh, I think during the pandemic, during 2020 and 2021, they put up huge numbers those seasons, sorry, 2020, 2021, and 2021, 2022 seasons. They put up huge numbers in the playoffs because everyone was at home to watch. Um, I think that kind of skews the numbers a bit. So 22% is probably back down to their normal amount. I, I do remember a lot of the American channels running with how popular hockey had gotten playoff hockey. And that playoff hockey was the new big playoff thing that everyone wanted to watch because it was so intense and like fast paced but when you have big market teams in this situation right so now we're not everyone's not forced at home to watch hockey when you have big hockey market teams like St. Louis and Philadelphia and Montreal in the positions that they're in that where nobody gives a shit and nobody wants to watch the games it's that's how you're losing viewership because when you have a massive hockey market like Quebec and no one wants to watch the Canadians because they know they're not making the playoffs, especially based on the new format, they have no chance of making the playoffs. So I think that takes away from it. Philadelphia not making St. Louis, like we can go through the list of teams, but there's multiple big teams that have no Chicago, right? Chicago's last place. Who's watching Chicago in Chicago? unless you're going to the games, because that's still a big ticket item to go to an event. I'm not wasting my time watching Chicago play. So what do I gain out of that? Do you know, does that make sense? Like, I just feel there's multiple factors here. And then even for, like we said, the playoff format, if I'm an Islanders fan, sure. I want my team to make the playoffs, but because of the format, there's a good chance. They're not going to make the playoffs. It's obviously, they're, they they most likely will. But based on statistics and just raw numbers, there's always a chance that they don't have a shot at the playoffs. And, and that's crazy to me. Like, Pittsburgh could be out of the playoffs. Washington could be out of the playoffs. It's so, so insane. And I rest my case. I mean, on the flip side, as soon as they go into the playoffs, it becomes a lot, a lot more entertaining. You guys ever want to see what old style hockey is like? Watch the playoffs because everyone is putting in 110% going into the playoffs. You could tell there are teams like this season that are just like coasting and, and just doing enough just to make it to the playoffs because, you know, they want to avoid injury and, and all that kind of stuff. But as soon as the playoffs start, that's when real hockey is. Yeah. Is and, and I think the ratings will go up playoff come playoffs. Yeah. It's just. When you come off all of the stuff that we got when, and how intense the playoff hockey was to have to watch this regular season with the new format and knowing that your large market team is not going to make the playoffs, why am I watching hockey? I'm, I'm not coming back until the playoffs. And, and that's the other thing. I mean, like you said, it like it's it's an 82-game season. This is not the uh, uh, football where you're only playing, what, what, 20 games, 18 games? 17. What Whatever it is. I don't, I don't watch football. But <laughs> only European football. But um, The worst kind. Um, it, it's really hard to commit to 82 games. You know what I mean? No, it is. It would be it the is. same for basketball, right? Like, I can't imagine, I know they're not a large market, but I can't imagine a lot of people in Detroit or or Charlotte are watching their games right now when their team has eight wins 50 games into the season. Do you know what I mean? Like, how are you going to complain to them? Like, oh, you don't watch it. I, I, I don't want to watch that. I don't even want to watch the Leafs when they're doing well sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't have anything else on that. I don't know if you want to add to that, but yeah, I'm good. I, I don't. I just have, uh, we'll segue, I guess. I, I will end on Leafs. We'll end on some quick Leafs. Yeah. I just want to ask you, uh, our ranking comes out tomorrow for our uh, tier list for the Stanley Cup contenders after the All-Star break. Just Leafs-wise. <laughs> and not where you would rank them anything like that do you believe that a fully healthy Leafs team playing at like 
at least over 80% ability, not health ability, it has a shot at a cup. 100%. They need, they need to be 100%. They need to be on the same page. Um, you know, they need to play as a team, stop with these stupid stretch passes um, because that results in a lot of turnovers. And I think we've been preaching that for years now. The fact of the matter is when they are playing like a team and, and playing structurally well, um, buying into the system, because I really do believe that Keith has a good system. It's just a matter of actually executing it. Uh, this team has a chance and, and they've grown. Um, you know, there's been, there's been some growing pains, but the fact of the matter is they need to um, persevere. And I'm calling it right now. McCabe will be a, a, a leaf. How did you know I was going to, that was my next thing. I'm just saying. I, this is not I, premeditated. The fact of the matter is, he—that's. Um, I was going. That was my next question. Do you believe that McCabe is going to get traded to the Leafs? Yes, I, I, I do believe McCabe is going to get traded to the Leafs. I believe a defenseman is going back the other way, and um, I think uh, I just think Kerfoot's going back the other way too because it's just you know. Here's here's. I mean, what at I this think. point, I'm taking Engvall over Kerf Kerfoot. But if I had my if if I had it my way, I, I wouldn't even keep both of them. Yeah, um, um, I know. agree with you. But 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 Kerfoot gets you more in return, and I think McCabe's contract is not big, but I feel like they're gonna get a they're gonna get Kerfoot a pick and a defensive prospect. I don't think they're gonna take anyone off the Leafs roster. <clears throat> Maybe they I, dump uh, Mete into that trade to to get rid of more cap. I mean, it's possible. I mean, I think they're trying to get as many pieces as they possibly can. And um, it, it's it's obvious to me that although Timmons was a great pickup, um, he definitely has some flaws in his game. Um, when the Leafs are playing these top-end tier teams like Boston, Sandine has no chance at any of these. Uh, like, he just doesn't – he doesn't – he – I agree. Definitely – like he's definitely, uh, you know, uh, part of the reason why that they lose. He, I mean, okay. in against mid tier teams and low tier teams, he will look spectacular sometimes, and you're like, yeah. wow. But as soon as you see him against a really good team, you're like, okay, this doesn't work. No, and 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 we know for a fact that you know, it's just not going to work in the playoffs. I think, you know, it's so funny because bef um, before the Giordano trade. I would have taken Sandine over Lilligren any day of the week, twice on Sunday. I agree. But now it, it's obvious to me that Lilligren has progressed a lot more. He had than, more time to develop. Yeah. Um, plus he's just bigger. Uh, okay. So I think though, if I'm, can I go back to that trade for a second? I sure. think if the Leafs are trading for McCabe and they trade Sandine, I don't think they're giving anything else. Like, I don't think Chicago, you, maybe you're getting like a fifth round pick. There's no way you're giving Sandine for McCabe and the Leafs are going to give up more than that. Do you know what I mean? Because Chicago can retain... If the Leafs give Sandine in like a second, let's say, or a first to retain the the whole salary or whatever, I think that, that's a trade. Because like McCabe is getting paid $4 million a year, correct? Yeah, and so. what does Sandine get to? 1.4. So if Same you give contract Sandine, as Lilligren. If you give up Sandine and a first round pick or whatever, let's say... And they retain all of the salary except 1.4 million. And you do a 1.4 million for 1.4 million. This is my reasoning because we might feel this way about Sandine right now, but to the rest of the NHL, he still looks like a high end prospect. Yeah. So there, I can't see you getting much more than that. Unless if they do add something else like Kerfoot or whoever, they, the Leafs need to get something else in return. Unless it's a salary dump. I just don't think it'll be a one for one because, like, there. I think there needs to be salary going back the other way because I, I don't know if. Uh, okay, but if they give salary back the other way, it's a dump, and that means the Leafs are looking at someone else. Possibly, possibly, because I just I, I think they might be over the cap as soon as uh, Matthews comes back. So I don't know if you know anything. I don't, but we'll end on this. I um, I don't 
believe, as far as I've seen in the rumor mill, that the Leafs are talking to anyone except McCabe at this point. Yeah, I heard some crap about Ryan o- o- O'Reilly, but I, I just yeah. I'm not sure. Okay. No, I don't know. It's just where are we pulling out nine million dollars from? But you know what's so funny, man? When you look at social media, the Leafs are talking to everybody. Like <laughs> I know, but like the real, the real like pundit guys that I've seen, the only person they're in talks with is Chicago for McCabe, as far as I've seen. Yeah, McCabe and somebody else. I just don't remember who, but I could possibly pull that up. Um. I mean, I'll take Max Domi if you want to throw uh, Kerfoot in that trade. That's so funny because you were not high on Max Domi. No, but I mean, I'll take him over Kerfoot. He's having a decent year this year, Max Domi. He he, he seems to understand his role more as a player. Yeah. um, Blackhawks are getting calls on McCabe and Murphy. Oh, Murphy's all right. That's what I saw. That's what I saw. Um, It'll be interesting. It'll be interesting. I think there's, uh, what, uh, a month left until the trade deadline, so it'll be interesting. And I know the Leafs want to get their stuff done quicker. They don't want to wait until um, the end of the deadline. I think they want to get things going as soon as possible so that they are fully ready for the playoffs. But um, I think the Blackhawks might, you know, hold up just so that they can get the best possible return. Um, but I'm, I, I, I'm saying it right now. I think McCabe becomes a leaf. All right. You heard it here first. McCabe becomes a leaf from the captain of the show. Let us know if you think McCabe becomes a leaf and thank you for watching.